what's going on everybody what is up so it's uh july 14th about 11 33 p.m and i wanted to quickly go over r kelly's motion to modify the questionnaire for the jury now for those of you that are just tuning in you should know that the jury in and of itself has been a problem since day one right you know whether or not it's trying to debate whether or not the jury should be anonymous, uh, which I've actually made videos on, and I'll try to remember to post a link of those videos above, or whether or not the jury should be sequestered, you know, which are, those are two different things. One being the anonymous jury, meaning you won't get the names and information about the identities of the jurors. And then another issue being the sequestered jury, which basically means that the jury is going to be locked away and they're going to be protected and they're going to be under lock and key. Two separate issues, but, you know, these have been contentious uh, issues uh, throughout this trial, right? And I'll try to remember to post a video uh, that I made on that subject. And you also have the secrecy of the witnesses. That's still an ongoing thing. And now we, we're getting down to looking at the questionnaire for the voir dire. For those of you who don't know anything about a jury in general, I've made several videos about a jury and the jury selection, how a jury is selected, and the questions the jurors are asked and able to eliminate jurors, and then the racism playing into the jury. Tons of videos on all that subject matter so i'll try again to remember to post the links to those uh videos above uh but before we get too far into this video let me just say that uh if you like this video please share it if you like this video please subscribe uh but most importantly please share this video uh recently i've lost access to my twitter account uh, for whatever reason they decided to they actually, I was going to say they decided to ban me. They didn't decide to ban me. What they did was they asked for my phone number. And I'm very self-conscious about uh, giving out personal information. And my personal belief is that when you provide a phone number to many of these platforms, what ends up happening is that they're going to tie in your activity with that phone number. So they want to track you. They, they, they really want to track you. They really want to get information about you. And I've advocated many a times on my channel that, you know, when you blog, uh, you probably want to think about blogging anonymously or uh, for those that do show their face on so and so forth. Another good thing to do is to kind of separate your personal life uh, from your real life. Maybe you want to blog under a fictitious name or if you're really pro popular, Maybe one of the things you could do is that you can have a fictitious name in your personal life, even though you're using your real name out on these YouTube streets, so to speak. But at any rate, uh, without further ado, let's get into this. But again, just uh, if you like this video, please share it and definitely subscribe. So we're going to take a look at the questionnaire for Kelly, and I want to know what you guys think about this. So uh, just a little primer is uh, essentially what the questionnaire is about. They are about to enter the voir dire uh, session or the, the voir dire phase of the trial. And voir dire is French for je vois, je dire, which is basically I see and say. So it's a, a question and answer session. And you're essentially trying to get rid of some of the jurors so that you will uh, be left with the perfect jurors for your case. The plaintiffs have a right to get rid of some of the jurors and the defendants have uh, a right to get some of the jurors. So what's supposed to come out of this is that you're supposed to have this fair trial or you're supposed to have a fair and partial forum at the end. And of course, racism always plays typically plays a role in these things and no doubt that it could probably play a role in r kelly's case there's lots going on here right you know there's also 
the George Floyd verdict, which could impact this. And I also have a video on that and I'll try to remember to post it at any rate. Let's go ahead and dive in. So uh, this is a document uh, which is filed in the United States District Court of New York. And it's for Ann Donnelly. Also, and this is for Robert Sylvester Kelly. Uh, defendant's objection and proposed revisions and additions to jurors questionnaire and request for hearing with respect to the same. So they want to oppose the original questionnaire and they're giving a revision of the questionnaire and they want to have a hearing on this, right? You know, so the defendant, Robert Sylvester Kelly, by and through his undersigned counsel states as follows, as his objections, proposed revisions and additions to the court proposed juror questionnaire and request a hearing with regard to the same and further request that this filing be placed on the docket under seal, right? You know, so some of this doc, this information we actually won't have access to because for whatever reason, they want to keep it a secret. Either they don't want to reveal information to the general public because they want it to only be for the jurors ears, right? So we start off with page two uh, as presently drafted in part and it says juror questionnaire the answers to the questions on this page will be disclosed only to appropriate court personnel as directed by the presiding judge so here right off the bat we have some secrecy here and again i think this secrecy is going to be uh, accepted and it's going to be routine because as you know the plaintiffs or the prosecutors have already won a motion to essentially keep the names of the alleged victims secret. And I guess in the course of time, as I said in the other video, eventually R. Kelly would have to know the names of the alleged victims. But there's another motion out there, if I can remember correctly, to even further delay that, right? So secrecy is a part of this case is no getting around it right you know so and then we go to defendants objections and revision to that uh, questionnaire and again we get the same thing juror questionnaire the answers to questions on this page will be disclosed only to the appropriate court personnel as directed by the presiding judge including the lawyers for both parties and the defendant so this secrecy could be working in two ways one way it can obviously be working for the prosecutors that they're expecting to get an advantage by keeping everything secret, but this could also work against them in my personal humble opinion, uh, as the defendants could take advantage of the same thing, uh, and try to use that against the, the prosecutors because essentially I would argue, well, I would believe that the more, I would believe that the prosecutors for the most part are winning in the eye of public perception, right? Now, don't beat me up. I know that there's a lot of R. Kelly supporters that come to my page, but I am going to go ahead and go out on a limb and I'm just going to say that the information that is coming out uh, as it regards to this case is mostly for the benefit of the prosecution. I say this for several reasons. I think in my humble opinion, and I know a lot of people are just going to disagree with me on this, uh, but when R. Kelly had the, the what do you call it, the crisis manager, which to me, he was really just a publicist. Uh, I think when he had him, R. Kelly was doing pretty good with him up until the point that, you know, the crisis manager uh, basically portrayed R. Kelly and started, you know, having dinner with uh, Michael Avenatti. Uh, but that's just my own personal opinion. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think the crisis manager was helping R. Kelly's public image, or do you think he was doing more damage than good? Now, when I ask this question, I ask you to forget about the incident with Gail King, where he, you know, came out and he he slipped is what my, in my opinion, is what he did is that he slipped and he said some things that uh, was not to R. Kelly's advantage. And then he further made the mistake of having dinner with Michael Avenatti. My analysis of that whole situation is that uh, the publicist in question was just a hustler. It's all he was. He was just a hustler. He was a street dude. 
And in my personal opinion, based on the document, the court documents that I read, he was a con artist. But with all the negativity behind him, I think his experience was working. It, it was working for R. Kelly. And in my personal opinion, everything was good up until he made that mistake. And which I believe was a mistake with Gail King, right? So that's my impression. Uh, I'm not sure if there was some type of ulterior plot to somehow pull the rug from under R. Kelly later on. Uh, but that's my initial impression. Anyway, moving on. Page three. And I noticed that we're going to see this paragraph a lot. We're going to read it once and we're going to skip it uh, when we see it again. Uh, page three. This question is designed to help simplify and expedite the jury selection process. You must give true and complete answers to all questions. Although some of the questions may appear to be of a personal nature, please understand that these questions will help the parties and the court select a fair and impartial jury. Part of the selection process depends on your ability and promise to follow the law as it explained as explained by the court. Thus, some of the questions included descriptions of legal principles and asked whether you can conscientiously follow them. The defendant, Robert Sylvester Kelly, is charged with racketeering in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Sections 1962C and 1963 for his alleged role as a leader of an enterprise. The enterprise and is alleged to have engaged in racketeering acts, including bribery, exploitation, kidnapping, transportation, and other individuals for the purpose of engaging in the illegal uh, assault activity, illegal coercion, and enticement of individuals and forced labor. Mr. Kelly is also charged with violations of the Mann Act including the transportation of individuals, including for the purpose of engaging in illegal assault activity and illegal coercion and enticement of individuals, including in violation, I'm sorry, including in violation of Title 18, United States Code Section 242A, 240, I mean, 24, I'm sorry, 2421A, 2422A, and B and 2423A. Mr. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. This is just a summary of the charges to give you some background on the case. The court will instruct the jury as to the elements of the crime, charge, and applicable law at more appropriate time during jury trial. Right? And and it said, and this is the defendant's objection to uh, the questionnaire, which we just don't have at this time. But at this point, this is where the information is repeated. We're not going to read that. And what they want to add to this is that they want to say, these are only charges. Mr. Kelly is presumed in the innocence of all these charges. Mr. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. It is the government's burden to prove Mr. Kelly is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt with respect to each and every charge. This is just a summary of charges to give you some background on the case. The court will instruct the jury as to the elements of the crimes charged and the applicable law during the trial, right? You know, so this is essentially what they, what uh, R. Kelly's defense team once said uh, when they get to point, when they read uh, the uh, page, what is this, page three of the questionnaire, right? And we get to page four and it goes on, it says, if you are, uh, one of some of the questions are, if you are currently a student, what is your area of study? If you are employed, describe your current occupation and job duties. Do not list name or location of employment. If you are currently retired or otherwise without a job, please write that and then complete the information below for your last job. Right off the bat, I believe these two questions are to try to get a feel for the type of potential jury uh, that, you know, let me see this again. I believe these two questions right off the bat is to get a feel for the individual before them. They're basically trying to see where this individual comes from, right? If it's a student, then you're looking at a person who is of a younger generation, right? that's going to come in 
and basically express their opinion in this case. And right off the bat, you guys let me know, right? You guys let me know and you tell me if you think I'm off, right? Um, would you want a young, inexperienced kid, essentially, <laughs> coming in and making decisions in this case, right? And I, so I'm not sure whose question this is. I think this would be the question for that the state has drafted. I'm not 100% sure, but I think these are questions that the state has drafted, right? So in my personal opinion, I think the prosecutors would want young, inexperienced people coming in uh, to make a decision on this case because I think, and you guys let me know, I think someone young and inexperienced uh, would be more likely to take the charges at face value and just say, yep, he's guilty. I think that young, inexperienced people have not developed the critical thinking skills that most middle-aged adults have. That's just my opinion. You guys, let me know what you think. Am I wrong? Do you think that young inexperienced or do you think that young students can develop the critical thinking uh, skills? And when I say critical thinking, I probably should say wisdom. Young people don't have the wisdom, typically, they don't have the wisdom of middle-aged adults, in my personal opinion. And they don't, not only do they not have the wisdom, but in my opinion, they won't have the experience. Uh, a person who is middle-aged would have seen more than someone who was young, still in school, has never had their job, probably um, has never been married, so on and so forth, right? You know, so I would think that they would want to modify or get rid of this question um, or, you know, the defense would be looking to use this question to their advantage, right? And then the question about employment, they want to know what type of individual this person is. Uh, unfortunately, people, I'm going to say something. I don't want people to come out and uh, beat me up about it. Uh, let me know what you think. But what you do for a living defines you. And I know that sounds crazy because I actually said that to one of my boys a while back and he got offended because at the time he was doing something in his life that he had to do just to survive, right? And right off the bat, he basically disagreed with me, but then he later he came back and he agreed with me. And the reason I say what you do defines you because you, you, you take this time to do that uh, a, a third of your day, a third of your life. Like if you've been doing the same thing over and over all your life, then that means a third of your life has spent been spent doing that one thing. Cause you got to go to work eight hours a day and then you get up and you prepare for work. And then you, some of your evening is spent preparing for that. Then you sleep for eight hours, you know, so that's 16. And then you only have, hopefully you have eight hours left for yourself to do whatever it is that you want to do with but the reality of that situation is that you really don't even have that eight hours to do what you want with your life because you're going to have to spend some of that preparing for work or if you have a career, you're preparing for your career, you're re-educating yourself, so on and so forth. And then if you have a family, right, you got to take care of your kids, you got to feed your kids, cook clean, you got to wash their clothes, so on and so forth. You know, so I'm almost willing to say because of maintenance and other responsibilities in life, what you do in your life will probably, uh, you'll spend 50% of your time doing that because the time sleeping doesn't count. Then the other time that you have, you, 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 you want to have time to enjoy yourself. You want to have time to enjoy life. And if you have kids, so on and so forth, I'm almost willing to say whatever you do in your life is spent almost 50% of your time disregarding uh, the downtime you spend cooking, cleaning for your kids or trying to relax and enjoy your life. Am I wrong? You guys let me know what you think about that questions below. Now, here's the thing. Do you think a person who, and I don't want to sound like a bigot. I don't want to sound like a moron, but I'll say this people 
who have different roles in, in their lives are going to see things differently, right? For example, a person who is a state politician is going to have a entirely different perspective, most likely, right? I believe they would, than, you know, someone who works at Burger King or McDonald's, right? And that's not to belittle a person who works at McDonald's or Burger King or whatever, but I guess what they're trying, what I'm trying to say is that uh, they're from two different walks of life and they are going to have a totally different opinion. Personally, I would want, I would rather have an experience. Me, if I was defending R. Kelly, personal opinion, I would rather have a person who, a middle-aged person who worked at Burger King or McDonald's all their life versus the state politician. Uh, because in my personal opinion, I just feel like, you know, state politicians are just full of it. And, you know, they'll go, they'll, they'll make a decision uh, based off of politics instead of making a decision based off of the actual issues at hand. And, you know, sometimes that may be good, but for in this, in this particular case, I would want a decision to be made based off of the, the, uh, the merits of the case and not uh, politics behind it. I don't want, uh, I wouldn't want R. Kelly to lose because there's a trend in the Me Too movement and that's the only thing that's going to be considered here, right? You know, so I guess I'm going to have to get through this a little bit quicker too because there's a lot of pages to this stuff. There's about, oh, Jesus, 34 pages. Uh, wow, this is going to be a long video too, by the way. So let me just run through this. So uh, defendants' objections, revisions. What school did you attend and how long have you attended it? I wonder why they are asking this question. Uh, basically, comments below. And then the only other revision is list the names and location of employment. That's interesting. Why would the names... Well, the names of... I mean, hold on a second. If you are employed, describe your current occupation. Why would the name of your company matter? And why would the location of your company matter? Questions and comments below. So those were the only revisions they wanted for that. And then another question, how far did you go in school? Uh, list any degrees and certificates. Again, my personal opinion, they are trying to figure out how educated, how well educated that person is. Do you agree, disagree? Comments below. If you attended college or graduate school, what did you study? Same uh, commentary. Then it goes, how far did you go in school? List any degrees and certificates, including the names of the schools and type of degrees. And again, I'm not understanding the logic behind that. If you guys understand why the names of the school and the type of degrees or certificates, certificates are attained matters, uh, I guess there's going to be a difference from someone who went to Harvard versus someone who went to a community college. But I'm going to say that I said this many a times. I'll say it again. Uh, just because you went to Harvard doesn't mean you know more than a person who went to a non-procedure school. Uh, my personal opinion, I think I actually had some facts on this. Uh, I can't recall, though, is that uh, Harvard is a good school only because of prestige. But when you compare the uh, the students, the, 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 what the students got from the education, uh, you're going to find out that there are, are essentially no difference between a Harvard educated, uh, individual and an individual who just went to some state school. Uh, it's going to boil down to how intelligent that student is. And it's going to boil down to how, much that student applied themselves, right? You know, so you can go to Harvard, but if you didn't apply yourself, uh, your your Harvard degree really isn't going to mean much other than the fact that it's a prestigious degree, right? My opinion. You guys let me know if you disagree. Comments below. What high school did you attend? Name, city, and where? what years did you attend? Uh, and did you graduate? Uh, I can understand the questions about uh, graduating from high school. Not so sure about uh, the high school they attended, so on and so forth. Uh, I guess if I think long enough, I can come up with uh, some theories on this. Um, you guys let me know what you're thinking about this. 
moving on i may have to actually skip some of this just to get through the entire video have you ever served any branch of the armed service of the united states including military service national guard rtc yes no if yes please state the branch of service how many years you serve and the high rank uh, you atta attain whether you were honorably discharged and summarize any special training you receive have you ever have you or any close family members ever been self-employed or owned your own business huh so this is interesting uh obviously they're probably going to use this to talk about the racketeering right uh without listing names of any uh people or businesses describing your business what person owned it and for how long what special skills hobbies and or interests do you have including foreign travel or membership in any clubs groups organizations including civic social union professional fraternal and recreational volunteer or religious this is in my personal opinion a class question they want to know what stock you belong you know you what stock you come from right um let me know what you think, right? And again, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna skip some of this stuff too because, like I said, 30 pages and lots to go through. Are you currently a member of any church, synagogue, mosque, temple, or do you participate in any religious organization? Interesting question. Uh, what is your relationship? Your, what is your current relationship status, right? So this is what we'll do. I'll read through these guys, and if you have any comments, I'm relying on you to basically give me feedback on this stuff. If you have any comments. Uh, just list the number of the question in or the page and basically put your comment to that question below, right? Please describe your spouse, partner, significant other, occupation, job duties, highest level of education. Please do not list her place of employment. Do you have any children? Obviously, this is going to be an important question. Please list the following for each. Please include uh, children you are currently raising or have ever raised if they are not your biological children. Defendant's objections. Let's just skip directly to the objections. Summarize any special training you receive and summarize any combat duty that you engaged in. Hmm. Uh, and then they, uh, another objection, uh, list the names of any such persons and businesses describing the kind of business what persons own it and for how long. Uh, another objection is which church, synagogue, mosque, temple, and for how long do you or have you ever held leadership positions in such church in the God, mosque, temple, and described positions? Uh, do you or have you held leadership positions in any of the religious organizations, if so, described? And how long have you held such status? <clears throat> Excuse me. Page, page seven. Again, gender, age, uh, living with you, yes or no, highest level of education, uh, type of occupation in school. Uh, and then they ask gender, uh, age living with you or highest level of education type of occupation living in school list the name of uh, employers or schools um page nine the defendant is charged with leading an enterprise which is led to have engaged in conduct including bribery kidnapping uh abuse exploitation transportation and other individuals for the purpose of engaging in illegal assault activity production production of uh, pornography of the bad kind and forced labor. These are only charges for Miss Kelly and the presumed innocent. These charges, and it is the government's burden to prove him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Is there anything about the nature of these charges in and of themselves that would interfere with your ability to decide this case fairly and partially in accordance with the instructions of the court? Right. So their objection to that, Mr. Kelly is presumed innocent of all charges. Uh, Mr. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all these charges. It is the government's burden to prove Mr. Kelly guilty beyond a reasonable doubt with respect to each and every charge. Moving on, right? Page 10. Uh, the law provides that certain individuals under age cannot consent. Activities with other individuals, is, is there any reason that you could not apply that law, right? And then the next question, the charges in this case involve allegations regarding exposure to one or more uh, transmitted diseases. Is there anything about such an allegation without more that you believe would affect your ability to serve as a fair and partial juror? Now, here's the thing. Um, there is, there aren't many cases where an individual has been tried 
for transmitting a disease, right? There hasn't been many cases. And I think this question is going to be fairly important because typically when you do have allegations of transmitting diseases, it's typically a civil charge. Me personally, I think that's where this should be. You shouldn't be criminally charging someone for transmitting a disease. Everyone is an adult. You make your own decisions. And if you're out there casually uh, hooking up with people, you have to know that your risk of catching anything goes up. And if you're out there doing it, you accept that risk. Uh, so I don't think someone else should be charged for such a thing, right? You know, the only exception is that you were married and then, you know, your partner goes out and then they catch something, they know that they call something and then they don't tell you, right? That's the only exception. But like I said, there aren't that many cases, especially of this particular type of disease. This type of disease is herpes, which I always argue is a commonly transmitted disease. And I don't think someone should have to go to jail for that. Uh, that's just my opinion. I want to hear from you. Questions and comments below to question number 37. And the objections is that uh, individuals under certain ages cannot consent. And then the charges in this case involve allegations regarding unintentional huh, exposure to one or more transmitted diseases, right? So intent matters, right? You know, if an individual didn't intend to, to basically expose you to um, a transmitted disease, then that's going to matter. At least in my book, there's a difference between somebody uh, hitting you on by accident and someone intentionally hitting you. Right. And I think that same logic is going to pro uh, apply to a disease. Right. And then the other objections, please, please explain who, by what name and indicate how this impacted you. Is there anything about this knowledge and experience that you believe would affect your ability to serve as a fair and partial juror? If so, explain. Right. Oh, I must have missed this somehow. I didn't pay attention. So part of the question is, have you a family member or a close friend? I actually, hold on a second. It was never actually. So their question was, is there any reason that you cannot apply that law? And another part of the objection, which I missed because they didn't uh, put it in bold, is have you, a family member or a close friend, ever contracted or exposed a transmitted disease? And please explain who, uh, but not by name, indicate how this impacted you. Is there anything about this knowledge and experience that you believe would affect your ability to serve as a fair and impartial jury? If so, please explain. I think that the defense is probably going to try to argue that herpes is a very common uh, transmitted disease. And I think they're asking this particular question because they want to draw that out. Uh, moving on. 11. Have you or a friend or family member ever been employed, trained, applied for work or volunteered in any law enforcement agency, corrections or related field examples? Police, sheriff, FBI, jail, probation, officer, of private security, uh, friend or family member with listing the names of person without listing name. Yeah, without listing names of the persons, please indicate your relationship with that person, where the job or nature of experience and approximate dates, right? And then have you, a family member, ever been employed or by, by or volunteer in any aspect of criminal defense work, including public defense office, a legal aid, or a related uh, support or advocacy group having to do with the rights of people's charge in crimes? And they obviously want the you know, the, if the specific information, uh, for that employment, have you or a friend or family member ever been employed by volunteering any aspect of work of a prof, uh, prosecutor's office, blah, 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 blah. Right. So the objections is basically just a list of names of the person, list the names of the person, list the names of the person. I think, uh, this is going to be obvious, uh, if there are any law enforcement individuals, uh, the defense will probably want to eliminate those people and the prosecutors will probably want those people uh, on the stand. Uh, if I was the defense, I would try to eliminate those people 
because I would be afraid that there's a chance that they could be biased. And I would say, I'm not going to say that, you know, people who work in law enforcement is, is un, in, incapable of being fair and impartial, but it's kind of what they do every day, all day. And, you know, sometimes these people become cynical, they become bitter. And in my personal opinion, they become hateful. Uh, they become amoral if they weren't all that already that way when they started. And for that reason, for those reasons, I wouldn't want any law enforcement people uh, on my case. I would try to get rid of them as quickly as possible. That's my opinion. What's yours? Leave it below. Moving on, I am going to skip some of this stuff. Have you ever friend, family member ever been accused or charged with, convicted of any crime or been subject of a criminal investigation? That's actually a good question. Uh, have you ever been accused of harassment? I'm going to skip a lot of this, this, this stuff. Have you ever been a victim of violent crimes, right? Uh, there are object, objections, list of names. Please explain the nature of the charges and what, if any, affected the this experience had on you. Uh, accuser of investigate, I'm sorry, have you, another object, have you or a friend or family member ever been accused of or investigated for or been involved in, in a charge of litigation regarding uh, harassment, right? Uh, if so, list the names and what, and what, if any, effect this experience had on you and then list the names and please explain, including facts, whether any civil or criminal investigation uh, proceedings or charges resulted in the outcome and what if, if any, effect that this experience had on you, right? Uh, let's skip through some of the stuff. Have you ever been involved or do you expect to become involved in any legal actions or dispute with the government agency? That's obvious. Uh, in my opinion, they're trying to figure out who hates the government and they're asking certain questions about uh, individuals to see if they're bitter because uh, I, I would be bitter, right? You know, if I was against the government and the government did something to me that I thought was unfair, I would be bitter. And then, you know, so the prosecutor is obviously trying to eliminate people like that. Uh, and then they want to modify that question. The defense, if yes, listen names and relationships to you, please explain the nature of the cause of the role testifying individuals against you. Uh, let's skip through. Let us skip through. Now, I'm going to apologize up front. I could be skipping very uh, pertinent questions or information, but um, I just feel some skipping is necessary because there's a lot to get through. And I'm trying to reduce the size of this video, right? So have you or close friend or family member ever been in prison? Have you ever taken any courses or work in the fields of abuse, counseling, law, criminal justice, criminology, or other related areas? Do you or anyone in your household or close friend own any guns? Do you have any friends or family members who have been lawyers, judges, law clerks, or otherwise involved in the legal field? Have you, a family member or a close friend, ever practiced law in the area of criminal defense prosecution? <laughs> so it looks like they're going to try to get rid of know-it-alls, right? That's my personal opinion because uh, the questions they're asking, have you, a close friend, family member, ever been in prison? Uh, people, in my personal opinion, people who have been in prison have probably had been forced to study the law on their own. Have you ever take any courses or work in fields of counseling, law, criminal justice, so on and so forth. Uh, obviously, they're looking for uh, uh, someone who has been exposed to law, but maybe not have been certified to practice, right? Have you ever known anyone, including yourself, who is a victim of assault or other assault, homicide, or other acts of violence requiring medical treatment or counseling? Uh, again, my same logic uh, applies there. Um, this one is a little different. I think that if a person is a victim, then the prosecutors will probably want to keep them in the, in the defense, probably wants to get rid of them because those individuals probably would be biased. Do you, anyone in your household or close friend or, uh, own any guns? Uh, if yes, they're probably looking for some type of, uh, they're probably looking to see if, 
a person is rebellious against the government. I'm not going to say people who own guns hate the government or they rebel against the government, but they are looking for people because, I mean, let's face it, gun right issues have been in the media uh, for the most part of the last four to five years. And they probably would, the prosecutors probably wouldn't want to have somebody like that on their uh, case because basically, in my personal opinion, you let me know what you think, uh, those people are more likely to be critical towards the law, right? You know, because when you look at the gun laws, there's a lot of little uh, nitty gritty statutes that basically dictate what type of guns you can and can't have. And people who own guns are probably sick of stuff like that. And they probably uh, would want to speak out against the government. And one way to do that is to, you know, basically be overcritical with a lot of laws and the prosecutors wouldn't want somebody like that. I would want somebody like that, right? You know, because basically I would say it's up to individuals, uh, the average everyday Joe to decide what's right for our society. Uh, I appreciate the fact that we have politicians and lawyers to go in and make up all these wonderful laws that basically control and rule our lives. But with that said, a lot of times they get stuff wrong. And when they get stuff wrong, that a lot of times it ends up and fucking up, you know, the lives of average everyday citizens, right? You know, so I think the prosecutor prosecutors wouldn't want uh, a gun owner <laughs> uh, on their case. You know, someone who is a proud NRA member, they probably wouldn't want a person like that unless they fear they unless they believe they can play up the race card if the person is white but uh as a defense i would especially want a black nra member or a black a uh, middle-aged black guy who own guns uh because more than likely he has had to jump through lots of hoops as it regards to the ownership of his guns and there's probably going to be a chance that, you know, he is going to basically be averted to a lot of laws and statutes as it re pertains to his gun ownerships. And there's probably going to be some dissatisfaction on the fact, especially in Illinois. Illinois has had some of the strict gun laws uh, in the country. And if, well, this is in New York, so I guess this doesn't apply, but... Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just thinking that a proud NRA member, especially a black NRA member, is going to be good for the defense. Um, that's my opinion. What's yours, right? Do you have any friends, family members who have ever been lawyers, judges, uh, so on and so forth? Again, they want to get rid of the know-it-alls, uh, the people who've had these type of conversations over the dinner table. Uh, debating with their uncles and judge and, you know, father-in-laws who were judges and lawyers, so on and so forth. Have you, a family member or close friend, ever practiced law in the area of criminal defense or prosecution? Uh, they pro Prosecutors probably don't want lawyers on this case. Uh, defend uh, Defendants probably wouldn't want them either, right? Uh, because, like I said, me personally, I would want an average everyday black man to basically be on this case. I wouldn't necessarily want to go with a black woman unless she's at least, I mean, it's inevitable. You're going to have to have black women on the case anyway, but I would try to make sure that the black women that were on this case were around and about, I'd say, I, I would want them to be uneducated and I would want them to be around and about the age of uh, 35 and up. I wouldn't want any millennials. I wouldn't want any of the new generations. I forget what you call them. If you know what they are, put it you know down below. But I, I wouldn't want anyone under 30, any women under 35 on this case, right? And the reason I say that is not because I'm misogynistic and not because I am, uh, you know, I hate women or anything like that. That's definitely not the case. Uh, I would want the 35 and up because... When you look at when you look at the age group, especially forty, you'll find that many of them were probably products of 
marriages where you know the man may have been two two times possibly even three times older than you know the mother and so on and so forth and they themselves probably have participated in relationships like this right um that's why i would want to select women 35 and up and i would want to reject uh women below that age now of course you can't come out and say things like this that's why you ask questions so you can get a feel for who you want to get rid of and who you want to keep right you know because if, if i was a defense attorney and i came out and i said something like that i guarantee you that i would probably get reprimanded by the court right and or they would find it unconstitutional or something like that right you know so that's why you ask questions like this uh and actually there's a video where a lawyer basically says you don't want black people on your jury and he teaches you how to exclude black people and i'll try to post that video on uh, uh on, on in, in the link above but essentially you know this lawyer uh what he does is that he wants a, a certain type of individual on his case and he comes out and he said he says you know typically black people um won't convict and he said the reason they won't convict is because well he doesn't say this but i you know i just interject uh the reason that black people don't want uh to convict is because typically they've been used and abused by the law so much that you know they may be vindictive towards the law right you know so if i am r kelly's defense team i'm going to want someone 35 and up female and i would try to get rid of uh anyone below the age of 35. and we're really going to have to skip this and because it is way too much to go get through here and we're already 46 minutes in um detail in prison or jail listen names and their relationships to you and please explain the uh explain including when and for what, what reason please explain including the period of time when you took such courses of work in that field where the list uh, institutions or employers and what capacity and state whether whether you continue to take courses or work in the in that field uh let me skip some of this because we're 46 minutes into this we are going to jump all the way down to because it looks like we need to go to page 34 we're going to do a quantum leap we're going to do a quantum leap and we're going to go to 27. <clears throat> there's my phone all right so what publicity known person uh do you most admire and why and actually i'm just going to go straight to the objections what uh, what publicly known persons do you admire and why interesting what publicly known person do you least admire and why how often do you make it a point to follow the news <laughs> interesting uh which sources do you regularly rely on for news please check the box below correspond to your regular news sources televisions newspaper radio internet social media youtube podcast magazines personal uh conversations and other <laughs> obviously a very tricky question i think if they are going to uh, select something about podcasts if they select youtube uh things of that nature they could be eliminated uh, by both the defense and the prosecutors because they are probably going to argue that these aren't viable sources of news they're probably going to say uh, most pieces that you find on in these uh area are probably going to be what do you call it they're probably going to be opinionated pieces right and opinionated pieces isn't uh impartial news right the same thing could can be said about you know some of these uh television stations and news and radio stations but uh for the most part i think they are going to be a be looking both the prosecutor and the defense is going to be looking to eliminate some people based on how they answer these questions right uh and then if you answered uh any of these questions if you ticked any of these checkbox they want to know specifically what uh website or youtube channel so on and so forth right please listen names of your regular news sources social media facebook wall street journal blah 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 uh what magazines if any do you regularly read or subscribe to 
Uh, let's skip. Actually, we can't skip these. What is your favorite book and why? Interesting question. What are your favorite television shows? Interesting. What are your favorite music, artist groups? What are your favorite internet sites, v vlogs, blogs, podcasts, social media sites? Uh, how often do you tweet, blog, vlog, podcast, post comments on the internet? Uh, all interesting questions. Then it moves on. If you are selected as a jury in this case, a judge will instruct you to avoid all media coverage and not to go to the internet with regard to this case for any purpose. Let me see if I can actually go to the objection. Actually, there's no objections to that. Uh, that is, you will be forbidden from reading newspaper articles or watching news reports about this case, Googling this case, uh, blogging, vlogging, tweeting, podcasting, or otherwise, posting comments on social media sites, etc. Do you have any reservations or concern about your ability or willingness to follow instructions? Please explain. Now, I need to point out here that if they tell you to do this and you agree to be on this case and not do this, and then you turn around and you try to blog in the middle of the case or tweet in the middle of the case, I think you're going to end up with being punished in some type of form or fashion, right? Is there any reason, I'm sorry, is there anything about the nature of the charge or the facts of the case as they have been explained to you thus far that would affect your ability to serve as a jury in this case? Uh, if you were selected to serve as a jury, would you consider the respect considering respective views of the jurors, even if their views differ from yours in accordance to the court's instructions, making uh, your decision. Yes, no, explain. Is there anything that you would like to discuss privately with the judge and attorneys? Please review the list of names of organizations on the following pages and then answer this final questionnaire. Are you f uh, familiar with any of the individuals or organizations named in this list? Uh, if so, indicate who, you know or may know and how you are or may be familiar with them and additional questionnaires that the defendant and his counsel request to be added to the questionnaire defendant through his counsel requests the following questions additional questions be added to the questionnaire defendant objects to the extent that they are not included because in and of themselves and were considered in conjunction with uh, with the other questions to be proposed to the potential jurors on the questionnaire. The absence of these questions deprives the defendant of his ability to legitimately and meaningfully engage in a selection of jurors during voir dire and denies him constitutional rights to have this matter heard by a fair and impartial jury of whose of his peers who will not be influenced or guided by improper factors, including but not limited to bias, prejudice, and sympathy. Then it goes on. Do you possess knowledge of the Me Too movement? <laughs> if yes, please generally describe your knowledge and list the sources of that knowledge. Now, that's a really good question for the defense because basically he's going to bait the potential juror to come out and talk about the Me Too movement. And in this day and time, who hasn't heard about the Me Too movement. The only way that you can't say that you've not heard about them is that you've been living in a fish tank for the past four years. And when you come out and start talking about the Me Too movement, they're going to try to pump you for more information, and it's going to reveal, in my own opinion, they're going to be able to pump you for information, and they're going to be able to trick the average person and to revealing whether or not they're biased. That's my opinion of that question. Let me know what your opinion is. Have you heard about the Me Too movement? If yes, please generally describe what you have heard and list the sources of what you read and heard. Have you supported and participated in the Me Too movement in any way? I mean, that's just not, that's obvious right there. Like if you are a Me Too uh, supporter, then that's going to introduce some bias into your decision. Now, just because you support a particular movement does not necessarily means, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be biased, but it's going to be hard for the judge to not 
basically have you kicked off the case because you support the Me Too movement. That's my own personal opinion. I definitely want to hear your opinion on that. I'm going to skip down. From what you have uh, seen, read, or heard, do you have general impression of the defendant? Uh, and then they're asking you to basically say what you believe. Now, keep in mind, and I covered this in one of the videos where I talk about the jury selection process. Just because you have formed an opinion about a case doesn't mean you can't be on the jury so long as you promise and you believe that you can be impartial. Uh, have you ever talked about R. Kelly with your family, friends, coworkers, or discussed it online, for example, on social media? If yes, what opinions have you expressed? Interesting. Because if you answer this question, you're basically going to say that you've been blogging or you've been you know, putting information out there about R. Kelly. And if you're, and basically the defendant and the prosecutors are going to be looking to eliminate these people, they probably are going to be looking for people who have not expressed an opinion. Uh, this is a very uh, important question. Have you watched or heard interviews of R. Kelly and, or any TV shows featuring him, right? Uh, do you have regular contact with law enforcement agents, employees, officers, through your work, neighborhood, or in your social life? Have you ever attended a rock concert? <laughs> if if yes, please indicate who uh, who you saw and where and when approximately. Uh, I'm sorry, I butchered that. Have you ever attended a rock concert? If yes, please indicate who you saw, where, and approximately when, right? So the last block of questions are extremely interesting because I don't care which way you flip it, you're going to basically set R. Kelly up for an automatic appeal, right? You know, especially questions asking an individual whether or not they support the Me Too movement, uh, whether or not they heard the heard of the Me Too movement. Uh, I think there is already case law that a person who is already out there blogging and expressing negative opinions about one of the litigants in the, in, in the case, uh, if they're already out there blogging and doing this, then they can be considered a bias, a bias, um, a juror. Uh, and then from the most practical standpoint, if you have that juror's name and identity, which I think they eventually will get, then they can, and if the juror says that, you know, they've been blogging about this case, then they can basically uh, argue on appeal uh, the biasness. And then not only will they be able to argue, but they'll have evidence of it, right? They'll have evidence because the average person isn't thinking about curtailing his blogging habits uh, with the anticipation of being on the jury for R. Kelly, right? You know, so if you believe one specific way, you're probably out there blogging about it, talking about it like I am, and they're going to go and get all your blogging records, and they're going to get all those receipts, and then they're going to go on appeal, and they're going to say, you know, this person has hated R. Kelly uh, day one. Here is their blogs before the trial. Here are their blogs during the trial, and here are their blogs after the trial where they're bragging about uh, putting in a judgment of, uh, against R. Kelly, so on and so forth, right? You know, so blogging, and I actually, there was another individual who uh, made a, I forget her name, but she made a video and she was saying that it, she never heard something so crazy about R. Kelly trying to get the names of the social media accounts of the people who are going to be in, in, in on the jury. She said she never heard of things so crazy. Well, it's pretty important because a entire case can be tanked because of uh, things juror members said on the internet, right? You know, especially if it's going to show obvious bias, right? So that is it for this video. This video took a whopping hour to make. Uh, again, questions, comments below. Let me know what you think about any of these particular questions. Please leave your comments below. Uh, most importantly, if you like this video and you want to support this channel, please take this video and share it on your Facebook accounts, share it on your Twitter accounts, uh, share it anywhere, share it here, share it there, share it anywhere, because uh, YouTube has changed their algorithms, and I don't get a lot of uh, views on my videos like I used to, so I rely on you. If you enjoy these videos, please share, and as usual, like, and if you're not a member, Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.